Prof. Should we have it? Yeah, let's fucking have it, mate. Uh, we, are, we are on episode number 12 of the Beautiful Struggle podcast. Number 12? 12. Wow, it's been, it's been a struggle. <laughs> Today's been a struggle again. Not really, no, 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 not really, I'm joking. It's, it's been alright, hasn't it? Yeah, it's So sad. far. Yeah. We're, uh, we're used to it now. Even yeah. I'm helping out a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I just leave you to it, but just directing from the yeah. corner. Yeah, no, I was like, yeah, Jay sorting out the cameras and stuff. <laughs> but when when you had the girls over and you messed up, I thought, oh, I gotta help him. My head fucking <laughs> went on that one. Jesus, <laughs> everything went wrong at one time, but we oh. got there in the end. So, apologies for the audio audio issues on episode ten. I think that was, wasn't it? With yeah, the, I think with it the was. girls. What what you have to appreciate, Jay, is our audio because you're so good at what you do. Our next level audio for most podcasts is like next level, and then our substandard audio is still a next level. And it's normal audio audio for everyone That's else. It, yeah, so no one else notices apart from you. Yeah, no. <laughs> problems, problems. Um, it's been a while. Obviously, it's just us two today. Yep. Lots to catch up on. We've got loads to catch up on, to be fair. Well, I was going to ask you, you were reminded by the t-shirt as well, did you go and watch Air? I still haven't seen it. No. It's, it's, it's phasing out now as well, because I can't get in the Derby cinema on Sunday, Yeah, but I can go to the Nottingham cinema. But the Nottingham cinema, the seats aren't as comfy as Derby, so I'm like, no way. The, the cinema's an experience, isn't it? Yeah. And you want it to be as good as possible. I was going to wait for the Fire Stick edition to come out. Really? But... Mm. I've been told it's really good. Yeah, it looks good. It's had good reviews. I was speaking to a guy in the gym this morning... They mentioned going on the weekend. Carla's yeah. not one for the cinema. Really? It has to be a really good film. Oh, damn it. So, she's going out Saturday again. She's living the dream. Yeah, yeah. So, I might go on my own. Mate, it'd prep be, it'd be worth it, yeah. It's like w- w- one of those things you do on prep in a cinema yeah. on your own. If it's something that you know you've got a vested interest in as well, like yeah. that storyline, you don't know who you're with. No. You're watching it by yourself yeah, anyway. Yeah. You're not talking, are you? So Exactly. I have to see it. I have to. And, mm. and it has to be a cinema experience so i'm taking from the the um the trailer and you know the thumbnail for the advertisements yeah michael jordan's not actually in it yeah it's just about the story of how the how nike yeah. developed the the a jordan yeah initially because it was it was a bit of a bit of a topic because if you watch the last dance i think they go into it on there a little bit yeah or i've watched it somewhere else maybe but they talk about like how they were saying it could be career suicide for them and all that yeah because i know he was, like, he was going to go with Converse, wasn't he? Or yeah. Converse approached him. Con- cons were like the the staple basketball trainer back in the day, yeah. like the Chucks. And you think now, don't you? How? Because they got zero support. Zero. Zero yeah. cushion. Yeah. They're like the furthest thing away from a basketball yeah. shoe. I, I can't even, like, I'm not even a massive fan to wear out and about, to be honest. I'm not, to be fair. I, don't, I can, I don't mind the leather ones, maybe, for like, just dressing up smart somewhere, yeah. or smartish, smart cash. Or, sometimes, like a plain white. Yeah. You know, in the summer, nice blue pair of jeans. Yeah. We're getting fashion tips now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to us. No. Fuck no. But, um, yeah, no, I, I might go and see you this, week, this weekend. Yeah. Do it. Hopefully. I but think I'm going to go Sunday. Yeah. What? They're only doing select screenings, aren't they? Yeah, it's weird, man. Like you say, they're phasing it out. It's been out longer than... I didn't see it advertised to begin with. I think from what I, I, I did... Um, I was watching something. I think Mar- do, you, do you know Marlon Wayans? No. I think he's in the film because he did a, a podcast or interviews. He's right. doing like the media run. Yeah. And he did a thing and he said they're only putting it in cinemas for like a month. All oh, right. Yeah. It's like a, a quick blast and then straight to Netflix uh, or whatever. Oh, so, you know, right. It will be on, yeah. But it's going to be a few months probably. Yeah. But I'd rather see it in the cinema. Yeah. With, with my imaginary popcorn. And what about John Wick? I, I appreciate the car's not a film buff, so. Do you know what? I have not seen a John Wick. You're kidding me. I know the hype. I know the height. <laughs> Jay, where, where you been? I know. They're not really sitting in Wales. <laughs> yeah, we'll cross the border. Mate, yeah, that's good. I mean, number one was fantastic. Yeah. Like they all are, you know, because it's new, it's unexpected, mm. and the action was like crazy. And I think two and three were just like pretty much the same, like action, action, action. Yeah. And number four was the same, loads of action, but... I, I was really like number four. Is it over the top though? Is it like OTT action? No, it's not. It's not um, fast twelve, <laughs> yeah. fast twenty. I love that shit though. But yeah, like, but that's like over the top. I, way I, over the top I guess yeah. you expect it now because it, 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 you know, there's been how many eleven or twelve of them? I think it's twelve now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like 
Bloody hell. So, yeah, you're not uh, being hung by chains from helicopters and then, like, landing flat on your wheels and just driving off. <laughs> Crazy, isn't they? They've come so far from the first film. I know, they have, yeah. Because I was a boy, obviously, Carla said, I was a boy racer when she first met. And yeah. Just, um, souped up cars and that. Yeah, yeah. So when it first came out, that was, like, the film. I know every word to it. Yeah. But then gradually it's just become... This. Well, yeah, it was like a realist thing to yeah. start off with. A lot of realism, street racing, etc. But now it's like just a special effects city, in it? It's mad. Yeah. They're making money, though, aren't they? That franchise is huge. But get the John Wicks 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I, I remember when the first one dropped, I did, like, attempt to watch. But yeah. Must have been, you know, one of those times when you're not really into a film and you're yeah, 20 yeah. minutes in and you're on your phone. So yeah. I just switched it off because I thought this is going to spoil it for me, and then I never revisited yeah. it. So Trouble I, is, I find in prep, I find I have a hard time of concentrating. Yeah. And films like really and gaming and everything like that goes out the window. Yeah. Well, podcasts in the bath is usually what happens. <laughs> or the car. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I've been doing. I've been. I thought right, I'll, I'll keep these like TV shows for prep. Yeah. But I find myself. Attempting to do watch something like on the Stairmaster, yeah, and then within five minutes I'm bored out of my mind, and then I've got to listen to music. Yeah, I've I've tried to do that the odd bit of meditation, but I find that trying to zen out for two three minutes, I'll find myself thinking about something else, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be thinking about this meditation. Yeah, it's like in the morning trying to yeah. do a bit of meditation. It's supposed to be like very mindful breathing and all that kind yeah. of stuff, but. Yeah, I was just not going too good so far. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you've come so far, no, you. If you think back to like last year or the no. like Call of Duty for however many hours to yeah. now being in all zen and, and yeah. meditating. I didn't realise how much uh, lockdown and Call of Duty scarred Katie. Mate, not me. Because I was like, well, I don't think anything is like that big a deal at the time. I'll, I'll be straight up. When that conversation started happening in the back end of that podcast, yeah. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I might have to, is this going to get to a point where I need to <laughs> chop it out because <laughs> I thought it was well, like you know, the thing is well, I thought we got off quite well and yeah. then Katie just thought nah let's let's give it to him she must have thought both barrels at the end <laughs> he's got off too lightly yeah yeah but it was a good one it, I've had you've probably had it as well like people messaging or when I've been on shoots people coming up to me in the gym yeah oh you the you did the podcast yeah, yeah, what's yeah. the one with my missus watching it with your wives on there yeah with like their girlfriends or whatever relating to it so yeah. it's, it's cool I think that's why we wanted to do it as well, isn't it? Because we know there's a lot of people in the same situation. Yeah. And um, people aren't on their own. It's just a case of if you've got a goal and you want to be the best there, you gotta, you got to stick it out. Yeah. And you've got to have that supportive person next to you. Cause 100%. With that, a will in the, or with every will in the world, you can't... There's no real balance, is there, between no. a relationship and a prep, especially when it comes to a dog end. Um, I mean, how many weeks are you now? Uh, Ten... And three days. Yeah, so you ten ten weeks, three days. But I imagine because you've done it before, you would have left yourself enough time. So this isn't panic stations. No. We're still like kind of coasting, and yeah. maybe the last six weeks is where I find the mindset and everything else is like gone. Yeah. Like everyone else can just forget about me for the next <laughs> six weeks because I'm gone. Yeah, I keep asking her like every three or four days so yeah. how's prep going yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm asking her like yeah because i'm I, i'm being conscious not to speak about it yeah um and she's like yeah it's all right so far I'm like yeah there you go good seven weeks in yeah so what um what like changes have you made so far with body weight and um, composition yeah composition to be fair i started in a much better starting point to last year yeah um, i wasn't a soup sandwich yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, always a good yeah. start good and then uh like I'm 19 pound down now. Wicked. Um, it, I had a quite a big drop at the start. Yeah. And then I panicked over that because I was like, "Fuck!" I'd just done my first proper like 10 month off season. Yeah. And it was all disappearing like that. Yeah, yeah. And then it flattened out. And then I started holding weight for a little bit too long. Yeah. And I started panicking about that. Yeah. And we, we're moving again now. Yeah. But I had a lot of uh, a lot of <coughs> stuff going on at home with like Sienna and. Oh, just yeah. drama. The, the stress factor again, bro. Oh, yeah. Managing stress. It was Huge. Like, it was... It got to a point where I was sat on the sofa one night with Carla. And I said, if one more thing happens, yeah. then my head is going to fall off, like with stuff outside of like the gym and that, with home stuff. Yeah. Prep's done. Yeah, yeah. I was quite happy just to throw the towel in. Yeah. And I said that, and I told Callum. I didn't tell him then, I just thought... 
I'll just sit on this. Yeah. I told him about a week later after it kind of all passed. But it was just, yeah. it's just having, if you've got kids, teenage yeah. drama. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid things. and. I think as we get older as well, I mean, obviously we discussed your goals and you discussed the book, you discussed wanting to do it again, put yeah. 40, etc. But there's no change in how you are as a person and, and, and your actual goals as you're growing up, your values, beliefs, they do change. Yeah. So now, like, obviously I think about myself when I was in my early 30s chasing pro card, turn pro, entering pro events, like anything could have happened to get your kids and I still would have been going to the gym. Still getting it done. Mm-hmm. Anything. And I, I think back now, I think, shit, that, I was a selfish motherfucker. But yeah. I had to be. And I wanted to be mm-hmm. in, in a sense that I wanted to uh, achieve certain things so bad that nothing else mattered yeah. but now obviously I'm older and wiser I've had a chance to um, see the other side yeah. with what I'm doing at the minute I'm like fuck you know I, I couldn't go back and do that yeah you it's it's all about perspective and yeah. where you are now looking back at it but at the same time if you didn't do what you had to do then yeah, yeah. you wouldn't be in the position that you are now yeah definitely so agree it's hindsight to uh, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. And that's why I have to be careful when I say these types of things because I don't want anyone to think that, oh, well, you wouldn't be here if you wasn't for bodybuilding, yeah. blah, blah, because I know that and I, I understand that and I appreciate it. Yeah. But I've, I mean, this is something that I've um, toyed with before the idea of maybe competing again. Mm-hmm. But I know now, well, like 1,000%, I'll never compete as an open bodybuilder again. Never. Because one thing is I enjoy being light too much. Yeah. I mean, I can do things with the kids, do things with Katie. We're going to... I went to go eight last week. <laughs> How was that? It was, it was all right. I was like, the max weight is 20 stone and I'm still 20 and a half stone. Yeah. But I was like, fuck it, it's half a stone. They're going to have these harnesses rated over 20 stone. That's just like a, you know, a caution. Caution, yeah. They're going to... They can't just have a max weight person. They didn't even weigh me anyways, which is a bit alarming. But yeah, yeah I was sound, mate. There, there's a little bit, actually, I say about doing normal things. I went to play football with Harley mm-hmm. I think the week before and I pulled my groin so there's one bit where my groin's still a bit iffy in the, in the trees where the uh, there's like little wooden ledges on like swings right so swings just like walking across these swings but as you can imagine the swings are on ropes so when you step on one your feet go whoop, oh yeah you do the splits do the splits yeah. so f- the first step mate I was like oh. <laughs> I said to Katie she was in front of me I said I don't think I'd do this and I was looking at how to get down. You can't get down. No. You're 40 feet up in the air. <laughs> the only way to get down is get to the end of the course because there's like five different courses within the trees. Yeah. And at the end of each one, you can decide if you want to carry on or not. <laughs> oh, my God. Or you could just drop. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking jump off. Drop to your death. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. But it, it's been good doing these different things and, and feeling a lot better. Like um, I had a, a, um, a medical the other day and they mm. said, you your resting heart rate's like forty five, and um, it's it could be. And, and if you didn't look like you, we'd be worried. But because you're healthy, it's quite common in like trained athletes to have a low resting heart rate. So I'm loads fitter than I was. Yeah, I remember having panic attacks. Obviously training, but panic attacks when I first started doing the hit cardio. I went on the uh, what bike yesterday after training. And I was smashing it. I was like, oh yeah, it feels good. Progress in a different lane, isn't it? Yeah. I had a question that would be good for a podcast as well about yeah. um, someone said in so many words do you still enjoy training or have you still got the same appetite to train knowing that you're not as big or as strong as you used to be Yeah. and I was like well good question you know sometimes when people ask questions you think oh F off like, what a stupid question yeah, it's yeah. actually one that I thought that's ah, interesting and then my thought is you probably agree um, your goals change so as long as you've got a goal, the enjoyment for training is, is driven by that goal, really. Um, so I was definitely finding it hard to train bodybuilding style because I had no real goal within bodybuilding. I was, I was bored. Yeah. I was bored of the, the bro split. I was bored of the push-pull legs. I was like, man, i really going to struggle myself through these workouts. So now I've had to kind of like adapt to my training and uh, being a natural. <laughs> I lost a bit of strength and I was doing extra cardio, trying to get in shape and cut down. So the, the, the strength was like dwindling. I was like, shit, I need to do something about this because 
me and Sam has obviously had a few like heads heads yeah. with the strength and other things. And I remember doing like four months ago a bench press challenge with him with one forty, three plates aside. I, remember, yeah, yeah. I did fifteen reps. And I was in the gym a few weeks ago and I did one forty and I got seven reps. I was like was that challenge on three plates or two plates? Because I tried two plates after and I got 20 reps. I was like, there's no way I've got stronger. That was three plates. I've lost eight reps off my bench press. Mm. I was like, shit, yeah, I don't believe in logbooking, but that's like alarm bells. Yeah. So I was doing some like mixed strength work with a bit of hypertrophy work at the end of my sessions now. And I'm, I'm actually doing from this week, and I'm enjoying it, a push-pull legs because you can split up your core exercise in that like bench press, deadlift, overhead press. Um, and then I'm mixing that in with some hit on the, the Watt bike and then going some bike rides with Katie, which is really nice when we have the weather. That's smashing, man. I've seen, um, I remember seeing the, the bench press challenge. Yeah. I think we trained around the same time. Yeah, because I think I got 16 like the, the time after with, with you. Yeah, with, yeah. yeah, with me, so. Uh, <laughs> Not anymore. What... Um, Obviously, as we're on this topic, obviously, you've just been a FIBO. Yeah. You know, like being around guys that are still in it. Yeah. In the thick of bodybuilding. Yeah. And listen, the guy is still big. Like, I'm desensitized to it because I'm around you so much. Yeah. But like, I'm sure you do get the comments saying, oh, you've lost size or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. The guy is still enormous. But then, obviously, you've been around guys that are still pushing and still yeah. at the peak of going after bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. Did that affect you mentally at all? Um, yes, a little bit. Like I'm not going to lie, um, but not as much as it could have, because I'm quite content with the way I look now. Yeah. But this is obviously what since October, six, seven, seven months seven, on. So going through that process, yeah. Yeah. So I've been going through that process mentally. It's been mm. very hard, but I remember being at the expo and thinking, "Yeah, I definitely don't feel big." Like I feel like a swimmer, two hundred and eighty-five pound swimmer. It's <laughs> so. mad for you to say that. Though. I'm a big swimmer, <laughs> but the look's different. You know, the the look, not being able to take anything is just like a kind. You know, when you go through that skinny fat stage of a diet, it's like being skinny fat all the time. You're yeah. just softer. So looking at people inflated and hard and vascular, I think, oh yeah, I would. I miss looking like that, but I know it's just not that time anymore yeah um but you do kind of think and get in your own head as well like oh i wonder how people are like perceiving me then you think yeah. oh um it went through my head a few times i don't know if a, as many people are coming up for like pictures and shaking my hand and speaking because obviously it's a bodybuilding expo so people want to see their favorite real-time bodybuilder yeah um, but i had a lot of people come up and you know, had many chats with people I was actually joking at the start with Ron. I says, I wonder how many times people are going to say you look really healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that many, to be fair. No? They're probably, probably scared. Scared to see it. <laughs> yeah. But um, for anyone like coming out of bodybuilding and having to uh, deal with the mental aspects of looking at yourself in a different light and, mm. and seeing this person in the mirror look back and think, shit, I'm used to something a lot more different, not necessarily better. Yeah. Because you come to realize that I like my look now. It's just, it's just different, but you get used to it. Yeah, I think you look a, a million times better, mate. Yeah, I saw the stories, the reposts and stuff from Feeble. Yeah, and every time I saw a picture of you, I was like, yeah, you just looks fucking healthy, man. Yeah, just looks looks healthy. You've got the curls out. You've got the tan on. I know. <laughs> I seen well, I seen the curls. <laughs> and I was like, look at this guy. I didn't get. I didn't. I wasn't tanned. But everyone says you look so tanned. Like, yeah. where have you been? And I remember. Well, as tanned as me, bro. I don't what? know. I say it's my Italian. You know, yeah. it's my quarter Italian. Mine's uh, Lex tan. <laughs> <laughs> or tan X, sorry. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, went to Dubai. I was in Feb. Yeah. And I've literally had three sunbeds since February. And that's kept the tan up. So yeah. I was, uh, I was like, yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing, no, nothing else. No nasal spray. No nasals. No. no. <laughs> um, but yes, Jay, thank you for asking. It's, uh, it's been, a, it's been a journey, and the journey yeah. continues. But yeah, yeah. A, a massive message to everyone is you must set other goals. Yeah. Um, whether that's the goal to go on a bike ride with the missus every week, or yeah. do like fifty kilometers a week on the bike, or you know, try a strength training program because you've never done it before. Yeah. I mean, I've bashed. 
strength training for years because I've been a bodybuilder and I saw no point in doing low rep work, three to five reps. Yeah. But now, you know, my values and goals have changed and then your mindset and your, your training goals and other things can yeah, change exactly, with it. Yeah. You're chasing a different, chasing a different outcome. Yeah. I want to be Seth uh, Frosey, functional and fuckable. Functional well, and fuckable. Fuckable for one person. That's it. Yeah. But um, <laughs> he's doing like a push pull leg thing at the minute. Yeah, he um, good. And, and I think it definitely works because, like I say, you can build other things into it. Yeah. But being physically fit and muscular and looking good, but being able to actually use it. Yeah. Because I've looked amazing in the past, but been absolutely useless. Yeah, yeah. Like Katie will say, I'm the most useless, good looking person in the world. <laughs> And it's true because in the, be- in the bedroom as well, and in the bedroom, yeah, <laughs> and in the bedroom, like five weeks out, you're getting nothing. <laughs> but now it's party time every night <laughs> in my head. <laughs> red, red panty night. <laughs> red panty night, yeah. Um, in the fire service as well, they used to call me the worst fireman ever. Yeah. Physically, but they, they said like if there was a poster for a fireman, what they should look like, you're it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, I know I'm really shit at this. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I used to say, I'd rather look fit than be fit. Mm. You know, you know, because obviously you go like, you know, Mo Farah can fucking run a marathon or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't look. Yeah. I mean, he looks fit, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then obviously someone that trains then they look fit. But yeah. They're not actually fucking fit, are they? No. But you're, so imagine trying to be both. Yeah. That's, you're that's you're the, the guinea pig for <laughs> what I'm going to do year after next. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I've said yeah. to Carla and that, that after the next year, yeah. I want to just be. I, I the way I've put it is that I just want to be a beast in the gym in terms yeah. of like the fitness and the training and yeah. that kind of like stuff. So yeah, yeah. After the next year, that is obviously. And, and it, it's like it still has <coughs> huge benefits and huge rewards because it makes you feel good. Yeah. But as I said all the time, you know this. You must enjoy what you're doing. So the gym even for me trying to transition for a period of time was a bit of a chore because I wasn't enjoying the training yeah so now it's just about okay what can I do how can I reinvent this to yeah. to make it enjoyable and uh, just on another subject I want to uh, say about the sign I think we should start having a challenge in the comments who can guess what time it falls what down? time it falls down <laughs> um so put in the comments what time yeah. you think I don't know we're what are we like 20 <laughs> something minutes in we're, we're absolutely like these the sticky pads on the back of it yeah and we're still trying to use it there's no stickiness left no I'm, I'm gonna I am gonna drill it oh actually I just see what you've done yeah <laughs> he's got a bit he's got a bit of card under there you got a ledge fucking hell a ledge well that, that should that should hold it yeah but I'm sure you did say about five episodes ago you were gonna come down you with you t- yeah I did didn't I and I've not yeah. come down yet but I will do uh, wh- how often do you come down whenever I come up when you come up I come down here yeah but it's getting warmer now so yeah. this might actually be used a little bit yeah Um. we, we should actually add some old bits to the studio maybe after, yeah after, after, in, a, yeah. in a month or so I'll get to the uh, that shop I told you about with the very first time we <laughs> were first, doing it yeah get some little ornaments and stuff yeah um, I was going to say something I had uh, on the way up let me uh, just check we're recording two podcasts today by the way we've got a guest on next so I just want to make sure we're not missing his messages um, no nothing right something I've I've um, I watched a podcast on the way up all you know that Bedros Koulian? Yeah, yeah. Like a, you got a sick podcast set yeah. based on that. Oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, he was speaking about um, like speaking things into existence. Yeah. And this week I was like just walking around like locally where I live. Yeah. And like seeing the standard kind of like families that you see, you know, in like a middle class town. Yeah. In the valleys, for instance. Uh-huh. And then I was thinking about what he said, he was talking about like, you, you'd never say to your kid about you, 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 to be average, like, yeah. you know, when you grow up, mm-hmm. just be average. Yeah. Just be, you know, have an average job, have average goals. and, and But then you'd always say, do the best of whatever you can be and, and reach for what, you know, the maximum that you can go, like yeah. goals and ambition and stuff. But then you, thinking back to yourself then like these these families or whatever they've obviously gone through that time where they've just 
they've got stuck in a rut yeah. of, of being in like that average mindset or oh, it's just happy to be there. Yeah. I just don't know how, because I'm going through a little tr- transition at the minute and I'm just thinking of like the next step for me with where I want to go. Like I want to cut back on traveling. I want to yeah. still have goals in, in another area. Mm-hmm. Um, like coaching wise, I've been coaching in the background for like nine years now. Yeah. And I kept it like low numbers, single digit clients. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I've been doing it nine years. I can put a little bit more into it. Yeah. Which is going to potentially give me more time at home. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm feeling like, am I stepping into an arena that I don't actually belong? Let me just reset that camera. Yeah, go for it, Jay. Do you know what? In, set, in, setting, like a, in setting like a high goal for my coaching. Yeah. Like I've done with Magic Eye and like I did with DJ in. Yeah, yeah. Am I stepping into an arena that I... What's the um, the term? Imposter syndrome. Yeah. I, I, get, I get what angle you like coming from, but, mate, there's so many imposters in the fitness industry, you fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. That, is, that was a... The, the thing is, you have a huge amount of experience, Jay. So, and I see so many people on Instagram day to day... Yeah that haven't got the experience you've got mm. that are making a great business so what you know when it when it comes down to it what are the the um i don't know what to say that in in terms of what makes an online coach what makes a videographer yeah what makes it really is the passion behind it passion behind the information it, yeah. the knowledge and the passion mm. you that's yeah. what makes it you so I think in anything in life what we have to do is remove other people's views other people's criticisms that's probably what I'm overthinking about right now I'm that needs to go mm. because we're doing it for us and our families yeah someone else who's saying something negative on Instagram like well, where, who's this guy what's this guy he's not feeding your kids no you're not paying for the new trainers you know or the, yeah, yeah. the holiday or whatever else so if we have a fucking goal and we think we're good at it, we have to stick by us, mm. back us, put the fucking chips down on red or whatever and go for it. Yeah. I just think, who doesn't want to... Katie actually asked me last night, um, I've got green spot on my finger. It's not shit, honest. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me, what do you think it is to be rich? And I was like, it's a good question because it's not just money, is it? No. It's... um obviously financial freedom but it's time with your family it's uh, being able to go on holiday it's being able to know that if you've got a massive bill on the car because it breaks you can pay it it's mm. knowing that you can pay the dog vet bills if someone something goes wrong it is being I think a lot of it has to do with finance and being comfortable but then being rich with um, who you associate with and if you're doing something you enjoy for a living yeah oh, it's, it's, like, it's massive isn't it yeah, that's what I'm thinking because I've always like I've done it as a, a pa- I've always called it a passion project because yeah. I've always done it on the sidelines and yeah, I've yeah. kept it low numbers. <clears throat> and when I when I was going down the route of like talking about average, I've always thought of myself as a, just an average coach that just yeah. knows a bit, which I feel like I've put myself into that rut yeah. of, yeah, of yeah. being or thinking that like, just it's cool to just be average. But yeah, but now because I want to, I'm really at a transition point where I'm like. Magic Guy is obviously still going to be running, yeah. but I'm just going to block off two days. The plan is to block off two days a week where I concentrate yeah. on the coaching. Yeah. So Magic Guy will obviously continue and then push this. But now, because I'm starting to push this more, yeah. and a lot of people already follow me from being the guy behind the camera, Magic Guy. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm like, oh, fucking hell, so well, this guy's a coach now. Yeah, but you could, you could play on that. You could be like... Um the camera guy coaching or something. Yeah, yeah. No, could, I know. I know. You play on it in a way. I know, yeah. But just like looping back as well about the rich thing, mm. it's like, what is successful? Because successful to me isn't the man who's grinding all the time doing 18-hour days, seven days a week. Yeah. Which is, you know, you can grind. Yeah. And you've been grinding for years. So surely the successful, the success is being able to earn the same or more money and having more time for yourself and your family. Are you on? That makes we did. 
We did check it, didn't we? Got it. We're back. Hopefully it wasn't gone for too long. It wouldn't have been because I've seen it. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. actually on just like a minute ago. Yeah. So so what we what we're saying is that being more successful really I think is not earning more money that's a byproduct, byproduct. of being more successful but the, the main thing for success is being able to earn that same amount more money but having more time for yourself and your family yeah so you by thinking fuck I can probably do two days of coaching and and uh, magic I can be this why would that not be a good thing it's the as you've been saying that now I've just it's the work smarter not harder thing yeah 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 no. for sure yeah, because just, uh, I'm struggling at the minute, I'll be honest, with the last few weeks. Yeah? Yeah. With what, with how much you're doing? Uh, or just the direction that you want to take? With how much I'm doing and thinking about the next step. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm like, I'm, right, I'm trying to do, do this. Yeah. But this is like, you know how much is there. Yeah, of course, so, mate. Um, and obviously being on prep doesn't make it fucking easier. It makes, I'm more productive with making the decisions and yeah. doing the things I need to do. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a minefield in my head at the yeah. moment. There's only so so many years you can do everything for before you burn out, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's what I'm cautious of. I don't want to burn out. Mm. I that, that term so much. Yeah, and, and if you're anything like me as well, you'll find it hard to offload tasks to other people. Yeah. Because if you like to speak to any like uh, person high up in business, they'll mm. say, you need a team. You need to be able to offload this yeah. and that. You don't need to be Delegate dealing with that. And it's like, well, I'm... Just not comfortable with doing that. Can't do it, man. So you need to be able to manage the the workload, and then obviously that needs to be a workload whereby the passion is still elevated. Exactly. Yeah. If you work too much, the passion can drop, and then your work might suffer. And before you know it, you're second guessing yourself again. Yeah. And thinking, or oh, other people second guessing me. Yeah, yeah. And but, that's that, that. With that's where I, I don't want to get to with Magic Guy. Yeah. And I've never wanted to get to that point where the quality drops mm -hmm. because I've never let it drop because I'm too busy Yeah, but I'm at a point now where if I take this on as well yeah, I need to take a little bit away from that to do a little bit more of this yeah, so sure. it doesn't affect the quality of both yeah um, I was listening to a podcast yesterday it was um, Matthew McConaughey and uh, Ed Milet right yeah. it was a good one to be fair and um, they was on about need the need for success, mm. um, the need for validation, the need for um, like jobs, need for work, need for money. And they made a good point because I've experienced this in the past by, for myself. When you're desperate, when you're needy, they can smell that like a shark can sense blood. Yeah. And you know at times when you're fucking desperate for work, desperate for money, and, and you, you almost trying too hard never comes. Yeah. But then when you're chilled and you're doing your own thing and you're just doing your job to the best of your ability, it will like come. It comes, yeah. Same analogy of when you've got money to buy some clothes and you go to shops, you can never find anything you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when you don't plan on buying anything or you've got no money, you see everything. It's always like, there, yeah. Fuck. It's weird, but it happens. And they, they were saying people can smell like, smell the need. Smell the need. Smell the desperation. Yeah. And it's not a good thing, so. I th Carla says that about women and men as well yeah one of, one of the guys that we know is go, going through something and then it's sp split up with his missus mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention names obviously but the story is and and she was saying to him the best thing you could do now is just act like you're not bothered yeah because if you're being needy and desperate and in her face and texting her all the time yeah she's going to fucking want to know you anyway she's no so just keep you cool chill out She'll come running back. Yeah. Same type of mentality. It's a bit mad, isn't it? It's true, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, when when people say play hard to get, it's play hard to get. Yeah. It's a saying for a reason, isn't it? Because it yeah. works. Yeah. Just whether you can do it or not. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to do, isn't it? Yeah. I I, I wouldn't. I can't do it enough. Fucking. If me and Carla have words, I'm the first one to fucking. Yeah. Go back with my tail between my legs. If I'm honest. I I I do that as well because I don't like it lingering on. I hate it. Can't be asked for the stress. She'll she'll sit there for three days and not speak. Is Katie yeah. the same? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a woman thing. Yeah, we don't have many female listeners. So, um, <laughs> you know, not, don't want to. No, so I have to check the analytics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got it. sixteen minutes. Yes. Um, so we got a guest on today. That'll be good. To be fair, um, why don't you tell us a bit about your training? 
the training that I'm doing in the middle. Yeah, because is it just what I used to do, like like, like push pull legs or bro split? It's um, it's a bit of a a hybrid, really. This this push pull legs is the core of it. Yeah, but there's um, obviously tailored towards my weaknesses. So yeah, yeah, I do a chest. It's pretty much a fucking chest day, really. Yeah. Chest and tries with a little bit of shoulders on on a Monday. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday is pretty much straight back session. Wednesday full legs. Yeah. And then uh, rest. Friday is a shoulders and arms. Yeah. And then uh, Saturday is like the old good old density day or posterior day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it, when it when you write it down, I mean. Push pull legs is chest, shoulders, arms, and it. Yeah. But um, or sh- chest, shoulders, tries. But on my plan, it's pretty much like chest movements, with a little, um, little just fucking side laterals. Yeah. Just a top up. Um, it's going well. It's going well. It, it, I've like we've trained in the past with like posterior pulls off the floor and stuff. Yeah. And um, I was getting to a point where I was. I was getting strong on the pulls off the floor, like yeah, ridic- yeah. ridiculously. I was going to say about the deadlifts, are they still going on? They, yeah, so yeah. we're still doing them. But the back end of off season, I was stiff legging. I was stiff legging two eighty for nine. Fuck you know. I know it was crazy, like solid set. Because Jordan was putting his hits up, and I was like, yeah. I'm, c- I'm c- catching up here, like, and he's yeah, a mo- yeah. he's a monster, obviously. Yeah. And I'm everyone always co- always comments on my pulls, and I was like, I want to nail three hundred. Like I was chasing the weight. I was like, I want to nail three hundred by the time yeah. off season's done. Never got to it. Yeah, well, if you're doing two eight for nine, you could have done three or four reps, maybe. Yeah, I know. But it's just is that too heavy I to was, warrant the risk? Still trying to be smart with it, just yeah. stay in that higher echelon of reps. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was like waiting to break double figures with two eighty. Yeah. And then I was going to put it up to three. Yeah, um, and that was after I told. Remember, I told my hamstring in um, December, the Olympia weekend. Yeah, yeah, that week. So yeah, after the the tear, minor yeah. tear, but a tear. Wow. Back to, got, got back up to two eighty by the end of. Uh, oh, it's it's sorted, isn't it? End of Feb, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So now we're we're just doing um we've doing RDLs off the rack now. Yeah, which are a bit more humbling, but the, yeah, the training's going good. Cardio's uh, just been put up today by five minutes. Yep. So 40 minutes a day. How did you do your cardio? I did start with using the bike. Yeah. Then I was like, fuck this, I'm just going to go stay master. Yeah, yeah. But now my legs are absolutely smashed. Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm trying to get as much done on the stay master before I'm, I'm on my ass, and then yeah. I'm switching back to the bike for the last part while my yeah. heart, once my heart rate's up. I'll be honest with you, I think the, the, the bike is great. I used to love the bike, and then mm. I switched to stay master. But in theory, like thinking back and analysing what we're doing, is we're, we're creating obviously a huge demand on the stairmaster. Yeah, we could probably not equal that demand on a on a bike, but we could get a high demand on the bike, and it's going to be far less impact on the joints, on the legs, on like the demand for recovery. Yeah, and I believe that the bike helps the condition of the legs, and it, I don't get why people say, "Oh, it um, my legs are getting smaller." <laughs> no, yeah, I, don't, I just yeah. don't, don't think you've got the muscle in the legs. Yeah. Like, they're not getting smaller because you're fucking filling the blood in, in those legs every time you do the bike. So that's helping recovery. Yeah. So I think the bike is like, would be my go-to if I had go-to. any prep again. Um, There's a discussion around the table, like when we was at FIBO, about the Stairmaster. And I, actually, I did the podcast with Ron. Oh, yeah. And Scott. And, Watch that in the bar, And they actually. were saying that they didn't... <laughs> he he hate, hates the Stairmaster. Yeah. For those reasons, because it's just really is a taxing thing i can get it for women because they're super light and they need the resistance Mm. and the effort level to be high to get any kind of warrant from the cardio yeah but for us guys i think walking's too slack yeah like your steps it's good to kind of like set that neat level of activity so have your steps by all means but they ain't cardio no no cardio is cardio you know heart rate 120 140 160 because this is another thing we discussed. Steady state cardio. Yeah, it's doing a job, but I believe that the intensity of the cardio will like magnify the results as well. So oh, yeah, putting those sure. hits in, those intervals where you're getting your heart rate towards 160. I even think like some of the Stairmaster the, the stuff that I see going on where they're just level four. Yeah. It's like 
yeah, you know, like leaning over and they're taking all the body weight. I'm like, <laughs> you, your your calories are being made up on that machine, and that machine has probably calibrated you standing up, right? Yeah, walking up those steps, not slouching over the motherfucker, no. holding all your weight. Yeah. I change position so much on the stay master because I'm in fucking bits. Yeah. But like I'm up right for most of it and then I, I might go down and crouch over for like a minute or two and yeah. then I'm back up. Yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, up and down. But I, I went through a phase. When I first went on the stay master, I was like, right, yeah, here we go. So I was doing like level eight for 20, yeah. level nine for five, level 10 for five. And then for the last five minutes, I just cranked it up to level 15 and I was pretty much fucking running up the thing yeah, for five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, which was, I, I was dripping in sweat. Yeah. But I just can't seem to get past level ten. I mean, my legs are just absolutely smashed. Yeah, constantly. Which I, w- I would. My my uh, feeling would be if I was to start prep. I mean, I do it with clients. Obviously, I would start them on a bike, and then we might look at setting a heart rate and setting a level, and then the variables are we can increase the time or the level. Yeah. But then the third variable, which is really good, is okay. Now we're going to put some fucking intervals in. We're going to make you work. Yeah. But the good thing about that is there's nothing more boring than steady state. Mm. and it goes it seems like forever doesn't it oh another minute yeah another two minutes hit flies oh my god hit flies because it's like every minute you're watching the clock aren't you yeah you're gasping for breath for 45 seconds like oh no time to go again before you know it 20's gone when I did uh, my my fake show back in 2016 that I did the men's physique yeah yeah I was doing hit on the stay master oh what I'm not wow. going to say who was coaching me but yeah we did hit on the stay master yeah that bad it was like 30 seconds like whatever level it goes to yeah. 20 or something and then right down like for th- uh, 40 45 or 60 seconds I oh think it was. My God. but by the time you're let you get from level 20 to level say five yeah for your like interval yeah it takes 15 seconds to get there yeah, yeah so yeah. 15 seconds times two by the time you bump pumping the levels up you're pretty much going fast or slow anyway Shit, so you're only yeah. resting for 30 that's nuts oh yeah that is, bad. that is crazy. I don't think you'll be doing that anytime soon. I'm not. Uh, no <laughs> fuck. No, that, that five minutes of level 15 was, is enough. Of, well, yeah. was enough until I fucking pussied out. I can it. imagine. It'll be, it'll be back in. I didn't put it. Stays didn't come in until the back end of prep last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see what we can get to. I yeah. mean, it's still got loads of time. In fact, we'll, you, you can give a little breakdown. Yeah. Because I checked in this morning. So okay. You, you can have a quick... You can have a quick look. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Sneak peek at Jay. Ten, uh, ten weeks. Well, first uh, first thing I noticed in here, Jay, the wheels are looking very good. Yeah? The legs look like they've grown. Thank you, man. For sure. Out of sweep looks bigger. Yeah. Yeah, because I think if there's anything like last year, like I'm trying to obviously remember back now. Yeah. But I think you're definitely like lighter in the legs. Yeah. So that's a huge plus. Is that something you've seen yourself? Yeah, every, everyone that has seen seen them and said yeah. your legs have come on loads loads mate yeah loads. i never had, i don't think i had bad legs last year but i can just no, see there's just, just more, like more complete go- a lot of a lot of out of the quad a lot of sweep yeah team north thigh gap <laughs> yeah definitely and the, the the thickness in the chest always always uh, had a decent chest but the shape's looking good you know the waist to lat ratio shoulders shoulder width yeah there's a couple on there if you uh yeah the thickness in the legs has definitely come on even from the side yeah i can see the glutes coming in as well jay they come in so it's like 10 weeks and three days yeah if we come in earlier we'll we'll do a one beforehand yeah i think it's always a good thing to come in early anyway yeah it takes the pressure off it means that you don't have to like over push yeah you know and then like you say that stress mechanism from that can just slow things down even yeah. more and then does that make you make poorer choices with, okay, we might need to use this or we might need to do yeah. that? Everything is like, yeah, we have so much to use at the minute. So many tools in the box, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, side shots are very good. It's Jay's nice and thick from the sides. Thick. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, man. These look very good for um, the period of time. Yeah. So for, for anyone watching, like, where should you be 10 weeks out? Well, I would say body fat needs to be in a good place um, and you need to start seeing these lines in the legs in the abs the lower back um, I mean my back was always last to come in mm. my hamstrings and my back um, but yeah we probably should start to see the glutes 
responding and seeing that outline ten, eight weeks out. Because no point in coming in four weeks out. No. Because then what what happens is in the dark, you know yourself, you go through that skinny fat stage at the first where you're fully blown off season and then you're just like a deflated off season. Yeah. But then you'll start to get a bit leaner. And then as over time you get leaner and leaner and leaner, you're also getting harder and harder and harder. So it's just like a gradual switch. That's why you can't diet in 10 weeks because no. you might be able to lose body fat quick, but the physique can't harden and tighten. Yeah. Um, especially like skin, obviously, as we age, the collagen reduces and the, the skin tightness reduces. Mm. Our ability to shrink wrap ourselves diminishes. So you, to do that, you need to give yourself time. But yeah, Jay's in the perfect spot here because you can see his Christmas tree in his lower back already. <laughs> And and people will have body fat areas that they hold different. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I remember you are an anom anomaly in the sense that you get ready from the back before you get ready from the front. Yep. Which is weird. That's backwards in itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so don't use somebody else's condition at a certain point to As a gauge benchmark. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you, like one of the boys that are, is on prep with me now, Lloyd, he's uh, he's doing a show four weeks. He started prep the same day as me, but he's doing a show yeah. in four weeks. But his body fat, when yeah, awesome, you, thank you, bro, appreciate it. He's got like w one of those bodies where his bod body fat is just spread evenly all over his yeah, body. Yeah, yeah. So even when he's like the, his heaviest, he still looks decent because there's no like pockets of like yeah muffin tops and love handles or yeah. whatever. There's nothing going on. It's just spread evenly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, show up the likes. He's uh, he's looking good at the moment. Four weeks out now, but yeah, it's uh, I'm happy. It's night and day compared to where I was ten weeks out last year. Yeah, and I've only been on prep six, seven weeks now at this point. Whereas yeah. last year we did a longer prep, so I was already on prep. Fucking, I was halfway through now. Yeah, yeah. So awesome, man. You seem you seem good anyway. You seem like in good yeah, spirits, energetic. Yeah, no. All is good, so. man. All is good as long as. My daughter doesn't fucking make my head fall off anymore. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Uh, I'll ask. I'll ask about that off. Off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Off podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, just a, just a point, actually. Fucking vapes, mate. That's all I'll yeah, say. Really. There's a, and you will notice I'm not smoking a vape. That's why I've got a chewing gum in. <laughs> I got told. Uh, I said to Jay at the start. I said, Jay, uh, do you mind if we make the podcast room a vape-free zone? <laughs> I felt well. I felt bad to be I'd fair. I'd be going out for vape breaks now, as you see people going out for fag breaks. <laughs> but I am. I know what Jay's going to say, and I let him speak in a sec. But yeah. I am like anti vape because they just they smell. You know anything like artificial? Mm -hmm. Got that smell. Yeah. I mean, I was in the airport when I was flying back from Germany. I was like, I can smell a vape. I'm not supposed to vape in there. And I was like, it just got such a distinct yeah. smell. It, I, it just brings back all the memories from when I was a young kid and my mum's smoking in front of me and I'm like I, I used to hide her fags yeah. I used to chuck them away I mean she used to go mental but <laughs> yeah my, my mind's scarred and these vapes now because of my kids vaping and I can see it I yeah. can see how um, you know how good they look how how the marketing is so yeah, like yeah. It's trendy, it draw, it's draws trendy, them in, it's trendy, trendy it's cool. cool yeah. So yeah, I mean, I have a thing against them because they're not been researched enough. They're, they're very like highly um, chemical, yeah, chemical based, and it's a liquid. It's a vapor. So you're sucking this vapor in. Body's like um, signaling it as or distinguishing it as smoke. It's going down the wrong hole. It's ending up in your lungs. Mm -hmm. That fluid's building up in your lungs. There's going to be some shit that comes out about these. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And, like, obviously, I'm, I do vape. But, um, you know, I, I'll say, she's, she's not going to fucking watch this anyway. But <laughs> the, kid, the kids are vaping, man. And yeah, it's just yeah. like, like, my daughter's obviously 14 now. Yep. But she knocks about with kids younger than her. Yep. Who are also doing it. 11. Yeah, yeah. And it, to the fact where I caught them doing it. Yeah. And then uh, it's just like, I've told her no. Yeah. Told her no continuing to see him, new yep. friends and stuff like that peer pressure or whatever um but like obviously i said to jay at the start when he sees me obviously we do this i am on the vape constantly yeah but i'm not like that all day there's only moments of the day where i will be puffing and that is normally when i'm bored or thinking yeah that sounds like all day but <laughs> <laughs> e editing 
I can go to town on a vape a little bit. Yeah. And then driving can yeah. be like that as well. But yeah, it's uh, I've got to the point now with what what I've been through the last few weeks just at home is that I'm consciously not doing it in front of her. Though. Yeah. So I'm hoping by me doing that, that's probably going to stop me wanting to yeah. n- not even crave it, just to have this bad fucking habit that I've yeah, got to yeah. get out of. And it will, it will get shifted. You know, if I was a kid now, though, mm. I think I'd probably do it. Yeah, because my my um, ambition never to smoke was driven from my mum smoking around me and me just hating it because smoking's had that stigma for years yeah. about unhealthy how how unhealthy it is. Mm-hmm. But vapes, it's only got stigma from older people really that have a certain view over things. Yeah, I wouldn't have had a, a view over it. No, I would have just think, oh, you breathe this thing and it tastes nice. And then you breathe out loads of smoke and it looks really cool. Why not? Why not? Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, you see, and, but I, I think it's criminal. And I know it's down to personal choice and everything else, but it's criminal that we can exploit children mm. and younger people. But I mean, yeah. In, in a vape, right? I think there's like, well, in the majority of them, I think there's like 600 puffs. Yeah. I was speaking to a guy a few weeks ago done four vapes in a day what yeah now my vape lasts me a week yeah 10 days unless carla's runs out and then she's she's having a lend of mine yeah which does happen every fucking day yeah (laughs) but mine lasts a week so that just shows how much i'm not doing it yeah yeah but this guy was four in a day that's insane that is is insane that's extreme so yeah um but yeah man i think well that's the alarm for the the cam so wrap this one yes get our guest or get some food get a guest in Mm -hmm. um thank you very much for watching listening to my fucking my my headspace right now (laughs) jesus mate kids and it it only gets harder jay it will ella's 16 and yeah it's just every day's every day's a new day yeah You've gone through that bit, and then you're going to have to go through it again. Yeah, but with a girl. With a girl, not yeah, a boy. Yeah, fuck that. And it's different levels. Like Obviously, I've got Harley, he's 14, he's a bit younger, he's like Senna's age. Yeah. But he just started, like, you know, getting into fights and started vaping and being around people that are even smoking weed and stuff like that. Mm. And it's like, how do you manage this? We're learning, we're parents, and yeah, it's, all, yeah. it's all learning. It's all learning, man. It's a they're, scary world, isn't it? They're learning how to be kids and grow up. And we're trying to like direct them as best we yeah. can. We're learning as well. My, uh, I sp- went to see my mother yesterday, and I was just telling, giving her a little brief rundown of yeah. what's been going on. And she was like, "I could never survive like no. dealing with that because my mother's a proper stress head. Like, yeah, she's yeah. stressed over everything. Yeah. So for her to manage that now, she's like, it's a different world. I was like, you do not know how easy you no. had it as a parent back in the day, mate. I remember, right? This is your finish off the podcast like yeah. this. I remember when I was like. 15, 16 years old, I had to wait until the parents were in bed and sneak downstairs to watch a 10 minute free view. That was like, that was like my week, week made. Yeah. If I could get a free view, I'm like, oh my God. And then there's only like snippets of that 10 minutes that are yeah. actually good. So you're like, enough though, no? saving yourself for the right bit. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, bloody hell, my son's history on his phone is uh, bigger than Ron Jeremy's. <laughs> We don't, we don't go there too no. much, but yeah, my 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 son's search history. Um, none of his friends or him are watching this podcast, but his mum told me what his search history looked like. <laughs> it cannot be repeated on this podcast. Really, cannot be repeated. <laughs> How did it make you feel? Just to wrap this up, I was like, on one hand, I've got go on, son, <laughs> go on, lad, yeah. um, and then another hand, I got man, this is a hard world we live in now because. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, the, the trouble is you know that they're watching this kind of thing. They're desensitizing themselves to certain things, and mm. that that becomes the norm. Yeah. So I feel sorry for the poor girl that's the first one. You know, <laughs> it could go. We could. I could dig the very deep hole here, Jay. So I think yeah, should no, leave it. Just leave it there because I got a fucking girl the same age. Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus. Anyway, nice one. Thank you very much for watching. Uh. Um, we'll see you in the next podcast in yeah. two weeks and also thank you very much as always to Chosen Few yep. uh, I have got a discount called Magic 10 but um, we're waiting on some special items for this big chat oh, so you can rock it on the podcast smaller. 
Yeah. So still need to get smaller. So I need to do like minus testosterone. Minus. Can't be in a plus. I got to be minus. Just put estrogen in. I could do. Yeah. Let's get some uh, arimidex. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Thanks, Thanks for guys. watching. Peace out.